There are some setups that start out looking quite easy and then get harder the more you start thinking about them. And the spell adjuster is definitely one of them, because we got quite a lot of elements interacting with each other here. As it's usually the case with Vellum, the solution here is choosing the right constraints for each element and then tweaking lots of values until it looks right. So let's take a look at how I got to this result right here. I don't want to start out with Houdini, I want to start out with a quick overview over which constraints we assign to each part of the simulation. So first of all, we have some soft webbing loops and a hard buckle. And of course, the soft webbing loops will be a vellum cloth. And for the hard buckle, we want to use a vellum shape match constraint because this is the constraint to get sort of rigid body-like behavior in vellum. Then we have some additional features here. First of all, we have this hem at our first wrapping strap. And of course, this will be a stitch constraint, as will be the loop right here on a bottom wrapping strap. And I also found out that the simulation gets a whole lot more tweakable if I also add a glue constraint between this webbing loop right here and the buckle right here. Then of course we want to add some animation to all of these elements and we want this animation to drive over on some. So first of all, here at the upper end, we want to pin this upper webbing strap right here. So we use a pin constraint for that. Then of course, we want to move a buckle down and I don't want my buckle to move my animation exactly. I want to have a little bit of slack in there. And therefore here we're using a pin to target constraint inside Vellum. And also we want a force pulling down on this bottom webbing strap. And this again will be a pin to target constraint, but this time a bit weaker than the pin to target that we're using for a buckle. And then finally, and maybe the most important part, I want to be able to simulate the friction between this upper webbing strap and the buckle and the lower webbing strap. And in this case, I don't want to use the friction settings inside the vellum solver. I actually again want to use glue constraints, but in this case, those glue constraints should be breaking and I want to rebuild them every frame. So essentially we have a very weak glue on the buckle that sort of holds this upper webbing strap in place up to a certain degree. And therefore we get something that looks very much like friction. So this is our overview done, now let's jump into Houdini. I'm starting this out with a quite large example file that you can find in the scene files and the main reason for this is that all of these nodes right here are all a bit fiddly to set up and I want to spare you watching me manually type in values for the next five minutes. So let's first of all get a small overview over what we're doing here. First of all, on this geostream right here, we have the buckle. On this geostream right here, we have the first belt. And on this geostream right here, we have the second belt. On a buckle, I load in a geometry in that I modeled in Blender. Then I'm setting up a group for my entire buckle geometry and then also a group just for the area of my buckle where I want to add glue constraints later. And this is simply set up with the keep inbounding regions option here on my group node. Then I found it necessary to move up my buckle a tiny bit. So this is what this transform node is for. And then we have the animation for our buckle. And our buckle simply moves forward and is tilted while doing that. Then let's take a look at our first webbing loop. I first of all start out drawing curves and what I found out is quite helpful or makes this a whole lot easier is to just draw the parts of the curve that you're really interested in and then use a join node to turn those disconnected parts into a whole curve. And the only thing that I changed here on the join node is to turn off the blend factor right here because this with a Bezier curve leads to some weird buckles in here. Then this is of course turned into a polyline and then swept to create my ribbon or my webbing loop. And then we again have a lot of manually set up groups. So first of all, again, a group for my whole geometry. Then just a point group right here at the end for the part that I want to pull in this direction. And then two groups each for the points that I later want to stitch together. So this is stitch A and this is stitch B. And then finally, again, we have another transform node for my animation on this geometry, and this just pulls the end to some point in space. And then finally, on our second webbing loop, it starts out quite the same as the first one. So again, we're drawing curves, we're joining them, we're turning them into a polyline, and we're sweeping them. And then again, we have a group for the entire geometry. Then our pin group right here, and this ended up being quite large because this part right here is off camera. And then again, we have two stitch groups for this hem right here at the end. So this is our main setup done. Let's now talk vellum constraints. And I want to start out with my buckle. First of all, again, I want to turn this into a vellum shape match object because 
this should be rigid. So for this, let's drop down a volume constraints node right in our first input. Maybe I'll also zoom in on our geometry. And in here, I want to select shape match. And the only thing that I want to change right here is the mass. And for this, I found it the best to set a uniform mass and to make our mass quite a lot smaller, a value of 0 0.001. Next, I want to use the animation on my buckle and my value of simulation. And again, as I said, I want to use a vellum pin to target constraint. So let's drop down another vellum constraints node. Let's wire up our inputs and set this to pin to target. Only thing I want to change here is to set the pin type to soft and check match animation right here. And I want to dial in the stiffness for both the stretch and the bend. For the stretch stiffness, I want to make this quite weak. I want to set the multiplier to 0.1. And I also increase the damping ratio to make the motion of a buckle a bit more damped, a bit more smooth. And on the band constraints, I want to make those a whole lot more stronger because I really want to have this tilting of this belt buckle come through our animation. So increase this to a value of 10. This is our belt buckle done, so let's finally drop down a vellum pack to later merge all our objects into the same geostream. Let's work on our belt. Of course, first of all, this will be a vellum cloth. The only thing I want to change here are the band constraints. First of all, I want to make them a lot stronger because we're dealing with a thick webbing loop right here. So let's turn this to 0.1. And I also want to turn the rest angle scale down to zero because this means Vellum wants to simulate just a flat sheet of cloth in here and does not want to keep all those bands that we have in here, which I think acts more like a webbing loop. Then we want to stitch this area here. So let's drop down a Vellum stitch node, wire all of this in. And in here, I want to set both my groups to points. And in here, I want to set up the stitch A group. And on here, I want to set up the stitch B group and everything else is left at default. Then again, I have some animation on this tube right here. So I want to use, again, a pin to target constraint. So another well constraints node. And this should act on this end part right here. So first of all, let's set this again to pin to target. I want to pin this end area right here, which is a point group. And this point group is called grep. And again, the pin type should be soft and is should match my animation. And in here, I mainly want to adjust the stretch stiffness. And again, I want to make this weaker. I want to give this a value of 0 0.01. This is our second belt done. So let's again copy our vellum pack and pack this geostream right here as well. And then let's finally look at our last belt. Again, this should be a vellum cloth and I can just copy my vellum cloth node right here. This has the right settings already set up. What I just want to do in this case is set up my pin group here as well. And my pin group should be at this end right here and is called pin like this. And again, I want to stitch the hem at the end. So let's search for vellum stitch. And again, both the groups should be point groups. And again, we have a stitch A and stitch B group right here. And everything else is left at default. And again, this gets a vellum pack. Now let's merge all our vellum packs together like this. And at this point, I also found it necessary or nicer to rotate my entire geometry to not have this sim horizontally, but sort of vertically. So let's drop down a transform node and rotate this on the x-axis, a value of 75.5 degrees in my case. Let's use a vellum unpack to get our geostreams back. And then let's add the last constraint set we need. So first of all, we need a glue constraint between this area right here, our first belt and this buckle. Let's drop down a vellum glue. Let's wire in our geostreams again. And I want to glue between my belt A, my first belt and my buckle like this. And we see our glue constraints appearing right here. And finally, this goes into our vellum solver. On my vellum solver, I found it necessary to increase the substeps and the constraint iterations quite a bit. So let's add four substeps in here and also 300 constraint iterations. And in the forces tab, I found it necessary to add a tiny bit of velocity damping. So let's add a value of 0 0.025 in here. And also inside the simulation, I want to increase the cache memory quite a bit to fit my computer's memory. So in this case, I'm just setting this to 25,000 megabytes. But of course, this is depending on how much RAM you have in your PC. 
let's quickly sim this and see what we get here. We, of course, need one more constraint, but let's get a quick comparison between the two. And while this is mostly working at this point, I do think that this top belt right here, or belt B, is a little too slack and it should be pulled a lot more taut by this buckle moving down. So again, this is where we want to set up our last constraints in here. We want to set up our breaking loop constraints that can really sell the friction inside the simulation right here. So for this, let's jump into our volume solver. Let's again add a vellum glue constraint. In this case, we want a vellum constraints node like this. And as this yellow box tells us, this vellum constraints node should be wired into our odd source node. Then let's set this up. First of all, the constraints should be created on each frame. The constraint type should be glue. We want to glue our belt B to the glue area of our buckle. And we want to move down to the stiffness and make this a whole lot weaker. And here I chose a strength of 10. Then I also want to take a look at my constraints later. So let's add a output group and I want to name this glue B. And again, these constraints should be breaking. So let's add a breaking threshold, which I set to a value of 0.5. And we want to use the stretch stress. So basically each constraint can stretch 50% more than its original length and then it breaks. And this basically is a setup done here. So let's jump back out and let's also in here to take a look at all of this, add a blast node on our constraints output. And I want to delete everything that's not glue B. So these are our glue constraints right here. And I want to merge this in back with our simulation geometry to see how our glue constraints get created and how they act. And now let's finally sim again and let's take a look at what we're getting in the end. And this is our final simulation done and you can really see those glue constraints pulling at our upper belt, our belt B, and also breaking and getting recreated every frame. And I think this really sells the force needed to adjust this belt buckle. So this is our entire setup finished. By now you have loads and loads and loads of values that you can tweak. What were the most helpful in my experience were tweaking the stiffnesses on those different pin to target constraints, how hard we want to pull on each element. So that's this constraint right here and this constraint right here. And then also inside the Vellum Solver on our glue constraints, really finding a nice balance between the stiffness of those glue constraints and then also the breaking threshold. And then finally, a bit of damping either on the solver or on each of the Vellum constraint nodes really helps a lot in reducing the overall jitter of this somewhat jittery animation that we got in the end. This is our setup for today. Inside the scene files, you can also find a file that I used for the teaser image or the teaser animation of this episode. And you can take a look at that, especially if you want to take a look at how I created those stitch seams right here or up here. But this is it for today. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.